Catapulting, as developed by naval aviators, was first used by cruisers and battleships as a means of launching their observation seaplanes to carry out spotting missions. As naval aviation progressed, emphasis was laid on carrier-based aircraft that at certain times needed a means of short, rapid launching. The present-day concealed flush deck catapult is a direct descendant of the earlier open cradle type and is used to launch land planes from a carrier deck. The only part of the catapult visible is the track with all operating machinery placed athwart just below the flight deck. By using animation, it is possible to introduce the essentials of a catapulting operation. The white line serves as a guide for taxing planes into the proper launching position on the catapult track. The addition of positioning shocks on the flight deck assists in the speeding up of operation. The right wheel of the plane is stopped by the front wheel shock. The tail wheel strikes the rear wheel chock, aligning the plane properly on the catapult track. The stop chock prevents forward motion of the plane until it is properly attached to the catapult. When the plane reaches the proper position, the hold back and release unit is attached from a fixed socket in the deck. The hook of the hold back unit keeps the plane in position against the full power of the propeller until the catapult is fired. Firing of the catapult breaks the metal tension ring in the whole back unit. The hook swings free, allowing the plane to move down the deck. The bridle or pennon is attached to the catapult hook on the plane and to the shuttle in the track. The bridle catcher is placed at the forward end of the track to catch the bridle as the plane becomes airborne. As the hold back and release unit is attached, the stop shock is removed. Below is the catapult machine, which translates the force of compressed air through a hydraulic cylinder and wire rope linkage to the shuttle. Tension is applied and slack is taken out of the bridle. Proper pressure is exerted on the hold back unit and the plane is ready for launching. The catapult is a reverse hydraulic block and tackle. The movement of the cross head and piston pulls the shuttle down the track by cable. As the catapult is fired, the tension ring is broken, allowing the plane to move freely down the track, carrying the bridle into the bridle catcher as the plane becomes airborne. This carrier is a flight quarter. Plane captains have manned their planes to start and warm up the engine in preparation for launching. Below in the machinery room, the crew readies the catapult by going over the checkoff list thoroughly. And the event launching by catapult is ordered. Shivs free. Liquid level OK. Buffers out. Cable tensioner piston in position. Cut off mechanism free. Tension liquid level OK. Tracks clear. Pumps not leaking. Preventer not leaking. Cross head OK. Supply level OK. Open supply valve. Supply valve open. Preventer pressure up, power on regulator, retraction valve, pull out. The flight deck signal light repeater is positioned by the control board operator as he manages station and prepares to cross-check the panel signal lights with those in the catapult machinery room.
Ready. The catapult operator checks the high pressure air supply. Closes tensioner valve and high pressure air to the accumulator. Starts number one and number two accumulator motor. Stand by to check signal light. As this word is passed, he turns on the suspension switch. Presses first ready white light. Answers stand by green light from top side. He pulls cross head safety pin. Pushes final ready red light. Fire. Signal from catapult control on the flight deck. Safety pin is replaced and the control board lights are blocked out by the suspension switch. After the rocker arm wedge is removed, the firing handle safety lock is replaced by an easily removed safety bolt. Visually rechecking the accumulator liquid level finds it slightly low, so the selector switch is turned to the number one pump. The accumulator is turned on, and he then gives first ready light. This is flashed to control and flight deck repeater. Flight deck standby green light, which is repeated in the catapult room. Final ready red light flashes on from the catapult room and is repeated top side. Fire from catapult control to machinery room. Suspension switch off, clear the panels. All control lights okay. And here's our boy Spoiler, right on a job. Pilots have manned the planes, the engines are warmed up, and they're all set for flyaway takeoff. Wheel chocks are manned, and plane captains are standing by to remove wing lines. Not enough wind, we'll catapult the plane. Aye. Right. Stand by to launch planes by catapult. Stand by to launch planes by catapult. As the word to launch by catapult is passed, the catapult crew topside bring in the positioning chocks. These chocks help to align the plane quickly and properly. When the plane taxis down the guideline, it is stopped by the front wheel chock, which is keyholed into position and locked into the deck. The handling crews remove the bow rail. Part of the safety rail is cut away to prevent damage to the bridle catcher as it is carried over the bow. The bridle catcher retrieving unit is bolted into position. And the bridle catcher is placed across the catapult track to prevent loss of the bridle as the plane becomes airborne. Pull back units for the fighter and torpedo plane and rear positioning chocks are brought from the catwalk. This chalk assists the plane director in lining up the tail wheel with the catapult track. It is keyholed into position and locked with the after pin. The hold back and release unit is positioned and locked into the deck cleat at a predetermined mark. Safety boot is slipped down and the proper tension ring is inserted. The stop chalk is placed in position to prevent excessive forward motion of the plane. This shuttle is lifted from its concealed place in the track and the spreader is attached. Another type is larger and remains visible at all times. It is covered by a protection plate that prevents damage to wheels and tires. Shuttles are connected directly to the launching cable concealed in the catapult track. New and properly tested bridles of both sizes are available in the port catwalk. As the fighters are to be launched first, the proper bridle is placed over the shuttle ready for the number one plane. Positioning shocks are in place. Shuttle spreader is attached, hold back unit in place, bridle catcher in position, and the bow rail is down. All preparations have been made to receive the first aircraft. Plane directors pass the number one plane up the deck with the shock men staying in close.
As the plane approaches the guideline, the plane director angles it toward the front wheel positioning chart. This prevents the plane from overriding the center line of the catapult. The tail wheel hits the rear positioning shock and the plane is properly lined up fore and aft on the catapult. The tail wheel is locked, the plane is brought ahead easy. Hold back and release unit is attached as the front wheel hits the stop shock. The plane director signals hold brake, stop shock is removed. Until the slack is taken up, the bridle must, must remain in this dangerous position for a final check of the bridle eye at the hook's throat. Slack is taken out of the bridle and tension put on the holdback unit by forward motion of the shuttle, controlled at flight deck panel by the electric cable tensioner. Tension continues until the proper compression of the tension spring within the unit is reached. The tension ring is again checked and the leather safety boot is slipped into position. Final check by the bridleman at the catapult hook throat. Proper tension of the holdback unit. Slack taken up on the bridle and the first plane is in all respects ready for launching. The next plane is brought into the number one spot and made ready to be taxied onto the catapult. Only sufficient number of planes are taxied toward the catapult to ensure no delay in launching. The check board is shown to the pilot of the first plane at the catapult as a final safety precaution prior to launching. Subsequent pilots make their final safety check from the board as the plane taxi into the number one spot. Doing this prior to reaching the proper catapult position speeds up operation. As the white light or first ready is flashed from the machinery room, the catapult officer signals all set for launching. Ready to launch aircraft, sir. Two blocks of case. The ship steadies into the wind. Green flag. Warning horn, launch aircraft. Pilot gets a quick one finger check. Nod's okay, turns up to take off power. Stand by green light to machinery room. Safety bolt out, final ready. Red light at control panel. Pilot gives final ready to dispatcher. Clear deck, fire. First fighter is shot into the air. Immediately, a crewman leaves his safety position in the catwalk to retrieve the pendant from the bridal catcher. Hey, Mac, give me a bridle. The dope would hand up the wrong one. Out of the way, spoiler. By reversing the movement of the crosshead, the shuttle moves back into the launching position. A new bridle is slipped over the shuttle, and another tension ring replaces the broken one from the last launching. As soon as the catapult is cleared, next plane moves up. Stockman stays with the plane until the wheel hits the positioning shot. The following plane moves into the one spot where pilot checks the mags and safety board. Other planes are left aft to facilitate respotting should a catapult breakdown occur, necessitating a flyaway takeoff. 
Hook Release Unit on. Tension is applied to the shuttle by the electric tensioner operated at the control station. Proper strain is applied to the tensioner spring within the unit. Slack is taken from the bridle ensuring proper contact of bridle eye at hook throat. Tension ring is checked. Safety boot slipped up. Arresting hook check. Signals okay to director. Ready for launching. Catapult officer takes over and gives pilot one finger turn up. This has previously been done in the number one spot as pilot nods okay. And at number two turn up, he advances throttle to full takeoff power. What do you do here, base? Get out of here. Flight deck set. Pilot gives final ready. Launch the plane. Firing button is pressed and the plane starts down the deck. Repeater lights out. Green light on, which is a signal from control to the machinery room to bring the shuttle back into launching position. Speed in catapulting the plane depends upon the teamwork catapult crews, plane directors, and the alertness of the pilot. Catapulting is relatively slower than a flyaway takeoff. However, a good team should be able to launch planes at a 45 second interval. Those shotmen are really in there in case of an emergency. As the pilot gives a final OK, the plane is launched and the last fighter moves onto the catapult track. Gusts of wind or improper positioning of the stop shock necessitates the use of the ready handling crew who are stationed at the island and are standing by to assist the plane director. In this case, the tail wheel did not line up. Last fighter is in position, turned up to rated takeoff fire, and is launched. Alert crewmen begin changing the positioning shock for the torpedo plane, which are longer and have a wider landing gear. A larger and stronger holdback unit is made ready for the heavier and more powerful torpedo plane and placed in the slotted cleat at a predetermined mark. Stop shock is positioned. The first torpedo plane moves up with the following TBF moving forward to keep an even flow of planes to the catapult. These shockmen are on their toes. As the plane is taxi down the guideline, they're ready for any emergency. As the plane nears the positioning shock, bridlemen move in to attach the bridle to the catapult hook to the plane. Stop shock is removed. Bridle is attached. Attention is taken up as the shuttle moves forward. Proper tensioning complete. Dispatcher takes over. First turn up signal is relayed to the plane crew who takes station. Plane gunners get set for launching. Pilot table final ready. Fire. The ready plane is moving onto the catapult. Pilot has had the one finger turn up and check board in the number one spot.
cocktail wheel. Bring it ahead easy. Hold brake. Stop chalk out. Brakes off. Well, Porter finally has his mind on something. A gee dump. He lost his gee dunk. That's a wonder he didn't lose his head. Let's get going. All okay? Fire. The crewman replaces the broken ring in the unit for the next plane. straightens the hold back connection sitting on the plane. This man must be alert and hooking the hold back unit on the plane as every second counts, getting that plane into the air. Bridle ready and held until proper tension is applied. As on the fighter, proper compression of the tension spring is indicated as the sleeve reaches the red mark on the shaft. Tension ring OK, boot on. Resting hook locked up, all set. Deck clear, fire. Let's follow one clear through and see what an average interval can be. Plane on a counterpart. 23 seconds. Pull back and release unit attack. Right along. Stop shock pull. Thirty-seven seconds. Tension taken up. Forty-one seconds. First turn up. Final turn up. Launch the plane. Forty-seven seconds is a fine interval. Every second counts in battle. Well done. As the last plane is launched, the area is cleared of all catapult gear. The bow rail is put up. The deck is made ready to land aircraft when they return from their mission. Successful catapulting on a carrier depends upon speed, precision, teamwork of the crew, and alertness of the pilot. A short launching interval may mean the difference between success or failure of an offensive strike against the enemy.